If you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably heard of Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, which has just released ChatGPT. Since then, a lot has been happening in the space, so here's a quick refresher. ChatGPT is powered by an LLM, which stands for Large Language Model. These models are trained on billions and billions of textual data, which led to the creation of GPT-4 by the OpenAI team. There are also other large language models which have just been released or are still in beta. LLMs are complex pattern recognition machines. Doing things like writing essays an hour before the deadline is now a walk in the park, since they have seen so many examples and the training data. How However, one issue in particular with the GPT models trained by OpenAI is that they've been trained on data up to September 2021. Ask it about anything that happened after that, and it might try to generate an answer that sounds satisfying but is false. In this beginner tutorial, we will be using Langchain, an abstraction over LLMs that will enable us to easily chat with a PDF created after the September 2021 cutoff date. But before jumping into the code, let's talk about the architecture. First, we will want to parse the PDF. That way, we will be able to get the text for each page of it. Then, we will chop the page's content into multiple chunks. We do this because we're trying to keep the context relevant within a chunk. Every time we will ask our chatbot a question, it will ultimately retrieve four chunks to help it construct its answer. But how does it know which chunk to use? That's where embeddings come into play. Embeddings are high dimensional vectors that aim to represent the meaning of the text chunk. Let's say we want to classify text chunks, whether positive or negative, using only numbers. Zero means negative and one means positive. Then an embedding of happy would be one. An embedding of sad would be zero. A warm welcome would turn into one. An unfortunate event, zero. This is fine, but very limited. That's why instead of assigning simply one number, we can assign it multiple numbers, enabling us to represent more nuances of the text instead of simply positive or negative. OpenAI offers an endpoint to do this for us. Finally, generating these embeddings is cheap, but still costs money. So we'll store them in ChromaDB, an open source vector database. Langchain will be mostly used in step three and four. The abstraction it provides means we could swap OpenAI embedding endpoint for another one like Cohere or change the vector database to Pinecone without requiring much code changes. Now let's get into the code. To get started, we'll need an API key from OpenAI. Link will be in the description below. If you don't have an account, you can go ahead and create one. Otherwise, click on Login. We'll click on the top right corner of our screen and then select View API Keys. And here we can create them. The name doesn't really matter. We can always change it or delete the key itself. We'll copy it over before clicking Done. Then we'll paste it in our .m file. So now we can start implementing the ingestion part. The code will be in the description below, so just follow along and if there's anything unclear, rewind or take a look at the code repository. First, we'll load the environment so that Langchain can use the OpenAI key. We'll create a function that returns to us the raw text and metadata from the PDF. The parse PDF function will take in the file path and return a tuple. The first element will give us the page number and raw text. The second element will give us the metadata of the PDF in the form of a dictionary. To extract the metadata, we'll use the PyPDF library. We read the file in binary, create our reader, and take the title, author, and creation date. To capture the text of the PDF, we'll use PDF Plumber to help us out. We'll collect tuples containing the text and its page number. We'll go through each pages, check if there's text, and append the tuple. Once that's done, we return what we've found. Coming back to our main function, we now have parsed the PDF, we have the pages and the metadata. We'll clean the text in order to help with readability and produce better results, and then chop the pages into text chunks. As this is a demo to reduce embedding costs, we'll only keep the first 23 pages. This is optional and totally up to you. To clean the text, we'll go through each pages and apply our cleaning functions to them, essentially returning a list of tuples containing the clean text paired with its page number. We'll use regex expressions to clean our text, merge hyphenated words, fix new lines, and remove multiple new. Now to create the text chunks, Langchain provides the recursive character splitter class. We'll take chunks of a thousand characters with overlaps of 200 characters. We'll create a document object for each chunk. It will contain the text metadata such as the page number and the chunk number. The source tag will help us track the chatbot's answer. We'll pass along metadata we collected from the PDF and finally return the documents. The more involved part is now done. For step three and four, we'll choose OpenAI to make our embedding. Langchain provides a helper method on the Chroma class. Using it, we'll embed all of our text chunks and store them in the vector database. We simply have to specify it to persist it onto our hard drive. And that's it. Here's a look at what we've done so far. We've parsed the PDF into multiple pages, made a few text chunks for every page, 
generated an embedding for every chunk and stored it with its text chunk into the vector database. Now to actually have a conversation with your PDF, this is how it's going to work out at a high level. First, the user is prompt to enter a question. Then a contents question prompt is going to take in your chat history and your last question. Langchain will call OpenAI to rephrase your question given the context of the discussion. Once it gets the new question, it will embed it so that it can now do a similarity search over the vector database. It will take four text chunks that have embeddings that are close to the embedding of our new question. In other words, they have high probability of having information that will help answer our question. These four text chunks are grouped with our new question into a prompt that will be sent to OpenAI's API. The large language model will then be able to use our text chunks to answer our question, so we can finally get the answer back. I know this is a lot, and thankfully Langchain provides a toolkit that makes this a total breeze to write. Let's get into it. Once again, we'll load the environment, which has our OpenAI key. We call our function makeChain, which will return a Langchain chain object. This is something I might cover in depth in a following video, so don't forget to subscribe to be notified. In this case, put simply, it represents the abstraction we use to interact with the OpenAI's chat endpoint. We'll also want to keep track of the chat's history. We'll put the rest of our code in an infinite loop. We prompt the user for a question and then run the chain on the question and chat history. We get back an object containing the answer and the four text chunks it used. Thanks to specifying the metadata, we know exactly which pages were used by our chatbot. We can now append our question and its answer to our chat history for the follow-up question. And finally, we get to print the answer and its sources. Now let's write our makeChain function. We'll use OpenAI's large language model and we can specify the model name to be GPT 3.5 Turbo. Again, we'll choose OpenAI's embedding since everything in our Chroma DB has been embedded using OpenAI. We'll specify the same collection name we used in the ingestion part pass the embedding function, and tell Chroma the directory we use to store the data. We can then easily instantiate a chain by using a helper method. We'll pass in the large language model we're using and a DB retriever as dependency. We'll also ask it to return the sources it used. And that's it. Here's a quick demo of what we've got. The link of the PDF is available in the description below and in the code repository. It's the International Monetary Fund's World Economic Outlook from April 2023. So now let's ask it what economic impacts were unforeseen. You can see it used chunks from page 10, 16, 18, and 21. The answer mentions how the inflation expectations are now higher than previously forecasted, which seems in line with what we've been hearing in the news. This PDF was clearly created after the cutoff date, so there was no other way it could know. Let's give it a follow-up question and ask it what events might have affected the inflation we're currently seeing. And here it gives as an answer a list. We can see it mentioning the war in Ukraine, which happened in February 2022. And this wraps up our tutorial. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.